Let's go to the Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, it is good to be together together with God's people in God's house, worshiping the living God. Father, we are so grateful to be in your presence. Lead us, show us how to push all things aside and to give focus to worshiping you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, good morning. Summer's almost done. I, I've been talking to a, a, lot of, a lot of children this morning. Children, are you, are you looking forward to going back to school soon? No? <laughs> Parents, are you looking forward to them going back to school soon? Wow. I, I got somebody especially enthusiastic back there. Well, I tell you what, my wife's an elementary school teacher, and, and she can't wait. We're, we're excited. A lot of good things happening here at, at the church here in the next uh, few weeks. We're, we're, we'll have promotion Sunday, next Sunday. You saw uh, some of how we do that. We all meet back in here at 1020 in the morning, and we'll get you some information on that as we promote our children and youth up. And also, don't forget about the fact that we've got a... Um, Sunday, I mean, a Sunday school picnic that night at 5 o'clock. That'll be a week from tonight. Well, I'm just, I'm excited to see you here, worship here this morning. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand and greet each other for worship at Memorial Baptist Church. Was, was it okay that I did that? Good. Let every 
Give thanks to the Lord our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. We praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, We're going to continue singing while we're taking up our tithes and offerings this morning.
cross of Jesus, we will gladly live our lives. Beneath the cross of Jesus, we will gladly live our lives. While Mark's making his way up here, I want to take just a second to recognize three of our youth that have been helping to collect our tithes and off offerings through the years. There are college students that are heading off for their first year of college. Wow. We've got Gavin Blake, would you stand? And we've got Gabby Bishop and Wilson Baxley. Maybe if you all want to catch them before they leave today, <laughs> let them know you'll be praying for them this year in their first year of college. And we'll be praying for you guys. Thank you, Kathy. I tell you what, parents, uh, as, as, I, as I know the parents, this is going to be the first time you've taken them off to school. Mm, some of you guys know what I'm talking about. It's, it's, a, it's a deep, powerful experience. We'll be praying for you. And so as we go into this time of meditation and prayer, yes, let's remember our, our college students that are, that are uh, heading back to school or heading to school for the first time, and remember their parents as well. Uh, it's, a, it's a powerful, emotional time for them. Um, also want to mention congratulations to Matt and Melissa Reeves on the birth of their child. Matt is the son of Sherry Reeves. Uh, let's also, as we always do, remember those that are recuperating at home, those that are overcoming uh, and dealing with uh, cancer and its treatments and its recuperation. Those in the hospitals, uh, Doris Wade and Carlton Harper, our homebound members, and as we've mentioned in the past couple of weeks, Ben Sprouse is back stateside and should be back in Virginia soon, and I believe his, his uh, in-the-office date, official in-the-office date, is going to be September 1st, that God continues to give us vision, that he blesses this worship service and also our Bible study hour, our Sunday school hour. Let's go to the Lord in meditation and then prayer. Our God is an awesome God He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love Our God is an awesome God Our Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ Father, we, we celebrate the victories that we have in life. Father, the, the small victories, the things that it's easy for us to, to overlook, a beautiful morning as we come to worship, the opportunity to, to worship in God's house with God's people, so easy to overlook those things. But Father, what a blessing and, and how it recalls the richness when we say to you, thank you. Father, we lift up to you our college students that are, are going back to university this week and weeks to come. Father, we lift up to you our elementary and middle school and high school students that will be coming, going back to school the week following. Father, we pray for an anointing on their life. We pray that they will be ambassadors for Jesus Christ, that they will see the campuses that they attend as mission fields, yes, to get an education, yes, to, to experience new things, meet new people, but always, 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 God's people are on mission. Father, we ask for a blessing and anointing upon their parents and their grandparents as they invest their lives in their, in their students. Father, we lift up to you those in our church that are recuperating from long-term illnesses and, and those that are recuperating from cancer and its, its treatments. Father, we pray for an anointing, a blessing of strength and health upon their lives. Father, we look forward with great anticipation our, our brother in Christ, uh, Ben Sprouse, and, and uh, we're excited that he's able to be with his family. We pray that you'll continue to bless and anoint his life. And Father, as we go into this new Sunday school year, Father, I pray that you will give us depth and breadth, that you will open up the Word of God this, this coming year and, and give it clarity and application and understanding 
And Father, that you will also give us the opportunity to, to bring more people into the house of God to study God's Word. And so, Father, as we study God's Word together as a people, as, as the pastor opens up the Word of God, Father, I, you know that the preacher's inadequate, but your Holy Spirit that comes into our lives, that gives clarity, depth, understanding, and vision. Father, we pray for all these things because you are good and you are the only one that can give it. In Christ's name, amen. Well, open up your Bibles to Genesis, the second chapter. We are in our series, on, and just doing this for, for April, oh, excuse me, August, what month is it anyway? I was just doing it for August, uh, called Dysfunctional Families in Genesis. And as I, as I shared with you last week, we're, we're going to do this in probably three or four message spurts and then stop it for a while, do it later. I, I think I told you that I, I've got about 10 or 12 messages, and then I, I looked at it more in detail and, and studied this week. Actually, it's more like 15 or 18, so I don't want to subject you to that long of a series, but we'll get to all that because what, is, what has been powerful in studying Genesis is to look at the family relationships. And, and one of the things that we need to remember is, as we're studying family relationships in the book of Genesis is that even the great heroes of the Bible, people that, whose names just roll off our tongues, people like Adam and Eve and Noah and Abraham and Sarah and, and Jacob who becomes Israel and has the 12 sons that become the 12 tribes of Israel that lays the foundation for the nation of, the, of, of Israel and the Jewish people who are to be a light unto the Gentiles and from which Jesus Christ himself comes. Yes, this is very important to us. As important as these patriarchs, as we call them, are, man, they just had lousy families. Just, just terrible examples of family relationships. And here's one thing I want, you to, I want you to understand on this, is even in their brokenness, God did not forget them. Do, do you have some, some dysfunction in your family? Do you have some things that aren't, is it just quite right? Do you, do you feel unworthy, un, unusable by God? Listen, if God can use the patriarchs of Genesis the way that he does, there's no telling what he can do in your life. Now, now last week we, we talked about uh, the, the first two providences, the things that God provides for us ver from the very beginning. First of all, we saw in verse 7 that God prov uh, created us for intimacy with Him. Because of that intimacy with Him, that we also point to intimacy in family and pointing intimacy to toward God for our family. The second thing that we talked about in verses 8 through 14 is that God provides beauty. There is beauty all around us, but he also provides beauty within the family relationship. And just like any other type, form of beauty, it's easy to take it for granted. Don't do that because God has continued to make that a blessing to our life. Now let me share with you as we look at verse 15. Here's providence number three. The Lord God took the man and placed him in the Garden of Eden to work it and watch over it. Providence number three is that God provides us with purpose. Now I think that's interesting. Keep in mind that sin has not entered into the world. Keep in mind that, that, that man's relationship with God is, is good. Keep in mind that there is no fracture between God and man, and yet God gives him work. Some of you may look toward a day and think, I can't wait until I don't have to work anymore. Folks, listen, work is, gives you purpose. You may be looking forward to, toward a day that, that you go get into retirement and go past what you're doing right now, but listen, you will always need a purpose. You will always need something to put your hand hands on and your minds toward. It is a blessing. When God gives us purpose and gives us something to put our hands on to serve, it is a blessing. Have you, have you ever been without a job before? 
I mean, you know, it wasn't your idea. It was your employer's idea. You didn't have a job. I tell you, for somebody that, 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 that wants to, <laughs> is at least a little bit self-motivated, it's a very difficult time to go through if you've never had a job before. With, with the recession that we had back in 2008, 2009, a lot of us experienced that. And if you remember, recall what that was like. That was really a tough time because God created us to have purpose to put our hands on things it is a blessing now pastor what does that have to do with with families well listen because God created you to have purpose because God created you to 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 work to serve somehow in some capacity we we have a passion for that and just like any good thing that God has brought into our our lives if we don't bring it under the lordship of Jesus Christ it's easy for it to get out of order you see God is a God of order and when we let things get out of order get out of place usually the first line that feels the effect of it is our families have you have you let your work or other things that you like to do have you have you have you let it get a little bit out of order in where it should be in your your family relationships well how do, you, how do you keep that straight? How, how do you line that up and, and do it according to God's will? Well, what, that, what, what God has provided for us and what we need to always remember is that our purposes in life need to be under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Even if you see things as running smooth and orderly in place, you're, you're giving proper time and, and, and priority to your family, to God, to, to your work, you always need to be bringing that under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Because when we are not attentive, when we are not bringing things before God, when we are not spending time with God on a daily basis studying his word and, and letting his spirit give clarity to the order that he brings in life it's it, it's it, it's easy for us to to let things just kind of drift and and drift in a place and find ourselves in a place that we never intended to be does that mean that you should put family first well here, here's what the bible says says this in many places, but my favorite is Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. You seek first God. You seek first his kingdom, his purposes. You align yourself up with his will. The other things in your life are going to fall into the correct priority. Let me share with you verses 17 through 18. 16 through 17, excuse me. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For on the day that you eat from it, you will certainly die. Here's the other thing that I want you to remember. Providence number four, God provides boundaries. And you've heard me talk a lot about boundaries. I, I mentioned that. I've, I've mentioned many times that boundaries provide security for us. Boundaries show us how far we can go and go no further without harm. But like I said, it's, it's part of our nature and, and anybody that's ra raised a preschooler understands and knows this, that there, there's just always kind of a, a nature to, to, to kind of push at that boundary a little bit. Find out where the edges are. And, and yeah, that's, there's a little bit of rebellion involved in that, but there's also a search for security. That's something I found out doing youth ministry for 25 years, is that children that did not have boundaries, teenagers that did not have boundaries, they weren't loving it. They, they weren't enjoying the freedom. They were frustrated in not knowing where security lie. And sometimes 
they would come to church and even push up against your boundaries just to find security in the fact that there is some place I can go to that says this is right, this is wrong, here's some security. Even when they pressed up against it. Now listen, when God places boundaries in our lives, it's not to take away the joy of doing the things that he says no to. God, God wants to say yes a whole lot more than he wants to say no. I want, I want you to take a look at something. Let's, let's take a look at verse 16 again. The first thing he says is, you are free. You are free to eat from any tree of the garden. Any tree of the garden. I mean, there, there's only one prohibition that he places. Just, just one rule, just one rule not to break. And, and you, you've read ahead, I know. You, you know that, that Adam manages to break that rule. But he says yes to freedom a whole lot more than he says prohibition. Let me ask you something, parents. When you tell your kid not to play in the interstate, is it because you want to take the... The, the joy from them of, of being able to, to, to be on a nice hard top service, I mean, a place that, that's, that's wide and they can ride their bicycle for as long as they can see. Is, are, are, you, are you trying to take that joy away from them or are you trying to keep them from getting killed? Well, sure. You're trying to save them from pain. God is, God is, when God puts boundaries on our lives, when he says no, it's not because anything is being taken away from God. It's because he is trying to save you pain. And he's also trying to cause you from inflicting pain on other people. And, and when we're talking about families here, he's trying to keep you from passing on generational curses of sin to the third and fourth generation. Have you seen that in the Bible? I tell you what, when you get older, when you start working with family systems, when you see the effect of something that happened when somebody was, 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 a, was uh, when, when a, a grandchild, something happened back even generations before they were born, and you see why that, that, that child struggles, and, unless there is a, a decided stand on not going with that behavior that has been inherent in that family for generations, it will pass on and it will become a curse to the third and fourth generation. God wants to stop that in your life because he, he loves you. Now, can you imagine just having one rule? How, how sweet was that? Just, just one rule. We've kind of broken down a little bit since then. I'll tell you what, if we just had one rule to worry about, well, attorneys wouldn't have anything to do. We, we'd, we'd put law enforcement out of business. I mean, I respect law enforcement, but, but I mean, I imagine that, that for, for, the, for the sake of there being no crime, they would be happy to do something else. We, we wouldn't have to have a military because we would not be in conflict with each other. Just one rule broke it, and now we can't keep up with all the prohibitions in our lives that we need to be aware of to keep ourselves from destroying our own lives and hurting other people. God wants to save us from that. He provides boundaries from the, for, for us. And what you need to know is that boundaries are a gift from God. It is something that he places in our life, not because he wants to take, take fun out of our lives, but because he wants to enrich our lives. And finally, the last verse I'll share with you this morning is this. Verse 18, then the Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is like, who is like him. Providence number five, God provides a partner and companion. Now, now something that, that, that's a, a little bit of trivia here is that bef this is the first time where, where God says something's not good. 
Six times in a row he says, it is good, 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 it is good. And the seventh time he says, it is very good. I mean, it's, it's all been good up to this point. But just as God is crea- man is created in the image of God, and God desires intimacy and fellowship. I mean, he does. I mean, that, that is... That is something that, that we can count on as, as he seeks to be relational to, for, to us, as he, as he reaches out to us. I mean, he's a relational God. We, being made in the image of God, can have the expectation of having the same, the same desire. And I don't, I don't have to tell you that. I mean, I mean you, even the most antisocial person desires some human contact. That's, that's the way you were made. And, and he saw Adam, and he said, it's not good. It's not good that he does not have a companion. And, and so he creates something. Uh, and, and it's not like he says, this guy can't get all the work done so that I'm giving, so I'm going to give him a co-worker. If, if he was looking for a co-worker, I mean, I don't, I don't want to sound strange, but God would have created another man. For his companion. I mean, another guy that's, that's strong, that's probably got the, a similar temperament. But, but, but God didn't do that. He didn't create somebody just like Adam. He created a complement to Adam. Is, this, is it a big revelation if I were to say to you that men and women are different? Oh, I'm so glad. Thir- 30 years ago in the 70s and 80s, that, you know, just to say that the men and women are different, we've gotten you in trouble. But we were so smart back then. But um, anyway, uh, but yeah, I mean, he created somebody to be a complement and, and to do things that he couldn't do himself. One, one of those things is to reproduce, okay? That, that's part of it. But mostly, his companionship, somebody to, to walk alongside and, and, and to share in life. And folks, that, that, I don't have to tell you, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. That's a, and that, that's, that's why these, these family relationships that we have, when, when, when things go good, it is so good. And, and when, it, when it doesn't go good, it hurts so much deeper than it would be, say, your neighbor, a co-worker. Yeah, when, it, when we're talking family, it gets very, very personal. We just, we just kind of have almost an, an instinct for that. Here's what you need to know. That men and women are of the same flesh. And that in a marriage relationship, the two are to be like one. And that there be no shame. God has put something. He's provided something beautiful. He's provided purpose for us. He's provided boundaries for us. He's created beauty in family relationships. And he's he's created companionship. It's a good God we believe in. It's a good God that we worship. And it is very, very, very good up to this point. And we'll, we'll talk about how it spins apart next week. We'll also talk about how God still stands with us in spite of our sinfulness, continuing to give us direction, pulling us closer and closer to his purposes of what is created good. To experience that, the very first step that you need to experience is a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You see, we're we're about to talk next week about the fall, when when things fracture between man and God. Sin comes into the world. The the, the purposes, the providences that God has for for us become frustrated. And there's nothing that you or I can ever do to fix the fracture. It all comes as a grace gift from God. God took on flesh, dwelt among us, paid the price for our sin. And if you receive that grace gift, 
of asking Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord and Savior. That's the beginning of the mending. That's when the Holy Spirit moves into your life. That's when you get clarity that goes beyond anything that I could ever preach or teach to you. That's the beginning. Have, have you done that? If you'd like to talk to me about how that's done, I, I'll be here. Perhaps, perhaps you've done that, but you've not made that public. You're, you're, you're welcome, welcome to come forward. Perhaps God has called you to be a part of this fellowship, to be a member of this church. Perhaps God has laid something else on your heart. Whatever it is, you're, you're invited to respond. I invite you to, to, to turn to hymn number 305 as we stand together and sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. Please stand. for coming to worship today at Memorial Baptist Church. Kathy, do you have any other announcements? Uh, yes, real quickly, just a reminder of what Mark already said uh, earlier. Next week is a big week. It's Sunday School Promotion Sunday, uh, which will happen at 1020, and then that evening everyone is invited to the all-church uh, Sunday School uh, picnic, and uh, there's more details about that in the bulletin. And this, this evening, Louie's got some real special things planned for the youth um, from 4 to 6, it's just the senior highs. They're working on a special project for Ben, and it's 6 o'clock, all youth. Great. Thanks, Kathy. And, hey, be sure, head right to a Sunday school class. Check that out. Let's go to Father in prayer. If you need to talk to anybody, I'll, I'll be standing right over here. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for being our Lord and God. Father, thank you that, Father, at the very beginning, you created it good. You created it good. You created it good, you created it good, you created it good, you created it good, you created it very good. You are a good God. We go out to a mission field to a world that is desperate to know a good God. Make us bold, give us divine appointments, ambassadors for Jesus Christ as we go out. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.